as you guys know, I am a connoisseur of fundamentals. To me, fundamentals are the most important thing with anything in life, but that's per user also with League of Legends, right? Your fundamentals are by far your most important thing. I like to say the word fundamentals a lot, but this is because I really stand behind it. Now, there are some fundamentals that I don't see here. So for example, the, the key fundamentals that I always say in top lane are would be wave manipulation, so wave control. This is definitely S tier. I'm just gonna go into S tier as well, and then I would want level up timers i don't see level up timers but this goes s tier for me then it's jungle tracking so wave control jungle tracking and then a reset timer so where's my recall timers they're here and then i want level up timers too those four to me are the most consistent so level up timers recall timers wave control and jungle tracking they for me go into s plus tier Right, if there was an S plus tier, I'd probably add it. Uh, S tier is fine too, with the sole reason that these four are the most important. And why level up timers? We don't see it, but I'm gonna put level up timers here too. The reason why these four are the most important is because you utilize them in every single game. Every single game you play, you're tracking the junglers, you're using level up timers, using recall timers, and you're controlling the wave. And the reason why these are also four core ones that I always advocate about is because they're very replicable. You can easily copy me, for example, and use them in your games too. It is very easy to know the level up timers out of the top of your head. So for example, if I ask you guys, when is your level three level up timer as a top laner, right? When do you get level three? Think for a second. It's after the first two waves plus two melee minions. And this is of course the same for you, but also the same for your opponent. Level 2 is able, to, you're able to uh, use your level 2 as well. Oh, you're wrong there, Mr. Spark, you only need 2 melee. So for level 1, you could do the first 6 minions of wave 1, plus 1 melee wave 2, but you can actually also do 5 minions wave 1, so 3 melees, 2 casters, and then 1 melee of wave 2, so it's only 6 minions, but you still get level 2. And this is because melee minions give more XP than casters, so to me, recall timers, Wave control, jungle tracking, and level of timers. We don't have it here, but level of timers is here as well. Are by far the most important fundamentals in the game. You use them every single game, and they make your landing phase super, super consistent. Then what else? I think strong side, weak side goes into S tier for me because all these four things are important, but you also need to learn when you're strong side and when you're weak side. And I apply this to every single moment in my laning phase, right? I always say the first four waves are the most important, and I always check every laning phase if I'm strong side or weak side or not. If I recall, I also still check if I'm strong side or weak side or not, and I'm able to tell this by the jungle tracking. So let's say this is us as the top lane to me. This is us. And we see enemy jungle starting here because we've left a ward down right here. Then very often what enemy junglers do, very, very often, right? They full clear into top. So enemy jungle would do some like rep buff every jungle camp in the game gives 4 cs by the way so it's 4 cs 8 cs 12 cs 16 20 24 28 we leave our second ward right here and we verify that enemy jungle has cleared 28 camps and then we were weak set in the early game very often because if enemy jungle paths top for example and our jungle would be pathing into bot we'd be weak side but then afterwards let's say we knew that enemy jungle path into top we also know where they're going to be going next because after they recall they're gonna go into their bot side because this camp and this camp are their respawning camps. Very often, if you spot enemy jungle getting around 24, 28 CS, you know they're gonna recall and go back to where they initially started their clear because that's where their respawning camps are. So by starting this, by knowing the starting position and by counting CS, you're able to track junglers, which is very, very consistent every single game. And that allows you to also know when you're strong side or weak side or not. Another very important thing to note about strong side, weak side is let's say my jungler is ganking bot at any given moment in the game. Let's say, my jungle is ganking bot here, right? And it's around level six, but I don't see enemy jungle responding to this gank. Then I will play as if enemy jungle is top side because if he's not responding to this gank, I am probably on the weak side as my jungler is showing on the map, ganking bot, enemy jungle is not doing anything, not counter ganking this. So then I'm assuming that enemy jungle is top side, I'm weak side too. So noticing when you're strong side and weak side is always very, very important every single game. A uh, tempo to me goes at S tier two. And tempo kinda makes everything in the game applicable, right? But tempo is a very weird concept, but generally speaking, how you'd say tempo is any time that you have over your opponent, let's say you've pushed in the wave and you are already recalling, the fact that your opponent still has to spend time to collect that wave gives you tempo over your opponent, meaning he still has to do something and you're already 
recalling, purchasing your items and walking back. So you have extra tempo, you have extra time on your opponent. Another example of tempo would be, let's say you're pushing bot wave, but the enemy team is going to play for Herald. You know that they're using their time, their tempo into Herald, so you can use your window going into bot side, right? So tempo is just a way of what is enemy team going to use their turn on and what can I do with my turn? And sometimes you can be ahead in the turn instead. So for example, if enemy team is dead, right? They have dead timers. Then you also have tempo over them as they are not able to do anything and you have a tempo timer to do whatever you want. Learning how to utilize tempo, learning how to abuse tempo is a very good thing. So it's a very, very important fundamental for sure. Champ Select for me goes here. I'm gonna filter a bit. Uh, the reason I think Champ Select is important is of course, if you set up yourself in a good position, uh, then you'll always be fine. But at the same time, I always highly recommend people to be one tricks. And the one thing I just think is important is to try and always have mixed damage, right? So let's say you're a river one trick, you generally speaking don't want to play with an AD jungle and an AD mid, so you ask for them to pick AP. You try to always get last pick as a top laner. So champion select is still important. And if you're not a one trick, then maybe champion select even goes a little bit higher because then if you know your counter picks, then it, it is even more important. But I think champion select doesn't even go that high for me personally. Because if you're a one trick, which I always advocate for, uh, then I think it's very fine. Now, champion pool, that is an interesting one. Champion pool, I'll talk, at, put an S tier. And the reason why I think champion pool is so important is because if you, like, like a very big thing that I always see with lower MMR is they have 10 different champions. Like in their top eight, their top eight almost has the same play rate as, all, as their top one, right? And because of this, you'll never be good at a certain thing. With League of Legends, there's so many options in the game. And if you are serious and you really want to climb, it is very important that you limit your champion pool to as small as possible. I always say the smaller the better. Because if you are a one trick, right? Let's say you are a one trick Renekton. You will know how to optimize your Fury usage. You know your RLA windows, you know your damage output, you know your matchup, but you maybe played Renekton into Jax 10 times already. And maybe that Jax is playing Jax into Renekton for the first time. So by default, having this knowledge advantage over your opponents, knowing your only windows, knowing your trade patterns, knowing your cooldowns, knowing the cooldowns in other matchups, knowing um, your reset purchases, knowing what summoners to take, that is all knowledge that you already have just by being a one trick. And if you have that knowledge advantage over your opponents, that allows you to focus on the wave control, that allows you to focus on the jungle tracking, the recall timers, and the level of timers. I always think it is very important to know your champion pool. And if you're serious about climbing, I'd always recommend your champion pool to be small so you have all those advantages. F keys to me goes in D tier. I don't use F keys. I've never used F keys. To me, they're not super important. There's probably people that would say that differently. Me, I don't care about F keys. To me, that's D tier, I don't care. Now, map awareness is important, right? So, so me, map awareness is S tier, of course. If you want to track the junglers, you need to have some sort of web awareness, right? If you want to know if your storms have weak side, you need to have web awareness if you know want to utilize your tempo you need to have map awareness so map awareness is something you it is super super important but there's always of course more nuances on how to utilize the information that you get with map awareness one of the biggest tips that i can give to increase your map awareness is pressing tap people simply don't do this enough pressing tap is a very broken tool that i can recommend to any League of Legends player, whatever role you play, whatever champion you play, there's so much information that you can get from present tap. One example is counting the jungle CS, right? If you count the jungle CS, then you also know about where they're going to be going next, so you know their tempo. On top of that, every time your opponent comes back into lane, this for me also goes into map awareness, it is pressing tap and seeing what items they have. Or let's see, let's say it's six minutes into the game, but you see that enemy jungler only has his jungle item and a long sword, you know, six minutes into the game, well, he's probably sitting at around 1.5k gold then at that point because he's been farming a lot or maybe he got a kill. So just by pressing tap, looking at items, you can very often see tempo, you can see what enemy team is going to do next or enemy champions are going to do next. So there's a lot of things like this in map awareness, pressing tap that is super important. You use every game, so to me, it's very, very important. Cooldowns is one that goes to me in S as well. Cooldown tracking is one of the biggest things. I don't really talk about this too much. Now, I talk about it for Riven, right? Uh, with Q-Delay and stuff like this. But cooldowns is one of the best way to learn how to optimize any matchup that you play. Let's say I play Riven into Jax, right? Right now, Jax has a nerf on his E. And if I let my full Q go and if I delay it a little bit and then he uses E, I have around a 4 to 5 second trade timer that I know because he has a very long cooldown, right? Same, for example, with Fiora W or with Set E or with Set W. These cooldowns are extremely long. To me, cooldowns, cooldown tracking is very important. And this ties in with having a small champion pool. Because let's say I play Riven into Gragas, right? 
If you guys didn't know, Gragas Ikuron, I think, level 1 is like 20 seconds. If you land it, it's a bit shorter, but it'll probably be around 14 seconds level 1. So Gragas Ikuron is extremely long, but very often people don't know this. So by not knowing cooldown timers, you very often lose very crucial trade pads, and then sometimes it feels like you can't do anything in a specific matchup, but that is because you're not abusing their weaknesses. And this to me also ties in with a very interesting topic. Let's say you are a, I don't care, right? Any one trick. Let's say you are a Jax one trick, and you're playing a lot, and you're struggling to play against Gragas. We're gonna use the same example. If you want to learn how to practice matchups like Jax into Gragas, I would sometimes also advise the Jax player to play Gragas a few game, so you understand his strength and his weaknesses better, so you also know better how to play against him. So that is very, very important and very consistent. So yeah, knowing cooldowns, very, very important. Uh, so for me, champion knowledge kind of ties in with what I just said. I'll put it in A. Uh, I mean, champion knowledge and cooldown, they're, they're kind of the same. Like, what would you say about champion knowledge? Well, I would kind of say cooldowns is champion knowledge. There's, of course, a little bit more things to champion knowledge. For example, how their passives would work or how their like when they are strong in general right so champions knowledge is important i feel like they kind of go hand in hand though champion knowledge and cooldowns kind of go hand in hand what else is champion knowledge that does not tie in with cooldowns because if i'm talking about champion knowledge i very often want to talk about the cooldowns i mean there are abilities in general right but that comes from just playing the game normally so I put that here no it's an interesting one champion knowledge how important is it i would even put it here sometimes I would just play against a champion. Let's say I play against Nafiri. I don't know how the hell Nafiri works in general. I don't know our cooldowns that much, but if I have these two things, I don't necessarily need to know exactly how he, she works, right? Of course, there's some champions where it's more important, but generally speaking, if you control these things, and remember, there's always the level of time is here, like champion knowledge, it is important, but it's not super, super, super important. Some of the spells to me goes in A tier. I think some of the spells is important, but at the same time, it's kind of, it is not super important, right? If you, for example, are a new, Riven player, you can just play Flash Ignite every game, or you can play Flash TP every game. It doesn't really matter. You're learning your new champion. Uh, the higher you go, I think the the be the more important it is to have certain summoner spells. Uh, a good example I can call is when I was playing the first time against Irel King in top lane. He's playing Flash TP against me, and he legit could not play the game. The second time I played against Irel King, he went for Flash Exhaust, and that allowed him to play the matchup much more uh, effectively, right? Because if Irel runs Exhaust against Riven, it's a lot harder for the Riven to find kill windows. So I think summoner spells is a very important thing but it is not as important as some of these things that we have above here, right? If you're playing strong side, weak side, well, you're playing your wave control as well, you're checking the jungle as well, some of the spells don't matter that much. Mechanics. I mean, mechanics are going to be S tier. Uh, I would always say that the fundamentals how are mechanics fundamentals? I don't I don't think mechanics are part of fundamentals. I mean, they are important, right? You can never say... I, I kind of would put mechanics here and I would put fundamentals here and they're kind of conscious to each other. Uh, but mechanics are super important, of course. If you don't have mechanics, the rest wouldn't make too much sense. But at the same time, I would say, let's say you are a Garen player, right? Garen doesn't necessarily have that much mechanical prowess or anything, but you could still be a challenger Garen player without having a lot of mechanics just by having good fundamentals. So I would actually maybe put it in A tier. Now, I would say that mechanics on some champions are more important than other champions, right? If you're playing Riven or Aurelia top, your mechanics matter a lot more than if you're playing your Jax, your Olaf, your Garen, I don't know, your, 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 your Orn, stuff like this. So I think mechanics matter, but they're not as important as some of these other things. Um, but again, it depends on the champion you play. If you play Aurelia, it's probably here, right? Maybe even here. If you play Riven, it's here as well. But yeah, if you play a lot of other top lane champions, it's not that as important. So I will put it here. The reason why I say this as well is, if I play against some master players, I genuinely think they could match me in mechanics and in spacing and stuff like this. But they don't own any of these things as well as I do. So just because I have better wave control, better jungle tracking, better recall timers, I will get ahead 9 out of 10 times. So mechanics are important, but they're not as important to me personally. Sidelining to me is, is S plus tier actually. Oh, now the reason why sidelining is so important as a top laner is because without sidelining you have zero structure or control in your game. As a mid lane main or as a top lane main, the reason why I can very often still get ahead in the mid to late game or always get in a good position is because I manage my side waves so well. If you don't manage your side waves well and you're not able to understand how side waves work, it is very hard for you to have a consistent resource income in the mid to late game. If you know how to deal with bleeding side waves or you know how to always crash side waves consistently and make them bounce back into you and get good tempo timers or roam timers from side laning, you can become very consistent as a top laner because you will always have 
high resource income, but at the same time, always manage to have uh, your side wave in a good position too. And that leads to good roam timers, good tempo timers. So that is a very consistent thing. So to me, side lighting also goes here. And remember again, level of timers is here too. Farming. I mean, it's ST, right? For me, Every fundamental wouldn't matter if it wasn't with farming too. You need to have good wave control, good recall timers, good sidling, good jungle tracking in order to get good farming too. So I do think it's a great below these, but farming, it is super important. I think it speaks for itself. If you are not farming consistently, you don't have high resource income, you're a useless player. So for me, farming is here, but it's still not S plus tier. I'm gonna have a bit more of a, how would you say this? Controversial statement, I bought Vision on A tier. I think Vision is important, but not as important as people make it out to be. I never buy pink wards. I rarely buy pink wards in a single landing phase, and that is just because my wave control, my jungle tracking, my recall timers are, and my level of timers are very, very consistent. I'm always aware if I'm strong side or weak side, and I'm able to judge enemy jungle tempo's timer, like the tempo, their jungle tracking. These two, I have controlled very, very hard. And because of this, I don't necessarily need vision because I very often am aware of what side of the jungle uh, the jungle set, right? So I know if they're either on this quadrant in the jungle or in this quadrant of the jungle, and then I know how to play. And if they're not responding to a bot lane gank, then I know, well, any jungle is probably top side. Now, there are certain junglers where you need more wards against, uh, some junglers with some very this weird gank very patterns. Successful. So, for example, against champions like um, Nunu, Zac, Evelyn, you would want pink wards against because they have super strange gank angles. So, against champions like this, you definitely need some better uh, vision, but in general, you actually don't need vision that much. Matchups, A tier. Uh, I think matchups goes very in depth with what I said yeah, about. Good coaches. Uh, the matchup for me goes hand in hand, kind of with champion knowledge and with cooldowns, right? But for me, cooldowns are more like the cooldowns is what define matchups. And I could play, you could play any matchup. Let's say I play Riven against any matchup, I will be fine as long as I have these fundamentals here in the top lane, right? If I have my wave control, my jungle tracking, my recoil timer, my side lighting, and my level up timers, I will be even or ahead in any game. So to me, the matchup doesn't matter that much. Of course, the higher you go and the better people are at abusing matchup, the more important it will be. But let's say you're playing in silver or gold, your matchup shouldn't matter that much because people don't utilize the strength and weaknesses in the matchup well enough for it to make a lot of sense. So to me, matchups don't matter that much as some people make it out to be. Your mid game, I put this in S tier. Uh, I think the early game is the most important thing. I think most solo queue games are decided in the first 10 to 15 minutes. And very often your mid game will be a result of how your early game went. If your landing phase goes well, your mid game will go well. Now there's still a lot of important things to, to do in the mid game, but the thing is, the, the most important things to do in the mid game is side ending well and understanding tempo well. If you have good tempo and you understand your priorities in understanding neutral objectives and understanding your tempo timers from side lining, then your mid game will be fine. If your early game is good, your mid game will very often be good because it's easy to control side and it's easy to control tempo. If your landing phase is bad, it's a lot hard, harder to control tempo as enemy team will very often have their first turn, making side lining harder too. So for me, mid game, I mean, I would even put it in A tier, right, with that reasoning. Because very often, your early game will decide how your mid game goes, and your your tempo and your side landing will decide how your mid lane goes. It is extremely important. Ah, let's put it in S tier. It is very important too. Okay, mentality. S plus tier. For sure, mentality is everything. In anything in life, mentality in my opinion, will be 60% of the work. If your mentality is bad before going into the game, let's say you're playing to win instead of playing to improve, your emotions during the game, and especially on long-term, will by default be bad. Uh, let's say you have a mentality that wants to only win, and you have a mentality that only wants to improve. In my opinion here, Right? If your mindset is to always win or lose, that's what makes you happy. You always hit a roadblock because you're going to have really good days and you're going to have really bad days, solely dependent on the outcome of your games. However, if your mindset is catered towards improving, regardless of the outcome of the game, you will still learn. And let's say you learn something in a game where you lost, you're able to still utilize that single lesson in the next 200 games that you play, right? And if you learn 10 or 20 or 30 different like little things that you're able to take into your next game by default, you'll become a much better player. So yeah, mentality to me is everything. It also means that you're probably going to make more logical decisions instead of emotional decisions because you will tilt less. And um, yeah, I uh, think mentality is a very important thing. Level up timers are here. I'll write it. I'll legit write it. Level up timers are S tier. There you go. Let's start with trading. Where would I put trading? I'm going to put trading here. And the reason I put trading in A tier is because before you should start thinking about trading or before you start like trading actively, you need to know 
how to control your waves. You need to know what the junglers are doing in the early game. You need to know if you're strong side or weak side, right? You need to know the cooldowns in the matchup. So there's a lot of things that play into before trading. And a lot of times, even against massive players, they would be trading with me even though they are on weak side. Or they would trade with me even though I'm about to hit my level 6, right? My level up timer. So to me, trading, it is a very important thing in League of Legends. But there is a lot of concepts or like a lot of, uh, I can't think of the word, but there's a lot of things that you should be thinking about before trading. So, um, yeah, it is important, but you should always think about the jungle tracking, strong side, weak side, cooldowns, level of timers before you go into trading. Wave states, all these things matter so much before you go for a trade. A lot of details, yeah. Itemization, S plus tier for sure. Itemization is such an important concept in League of Legends. Uh, if I play a matchup and my opponent itemizes wrong, or he, he builds the, the wrong first item, like I can already win my landing phase just because of that. Let's say I play Riven against an Alawi, right? Let's say I play Riven against Alawi. If the Alawi builds and she comes back in the first base and she buys a Ruby Crystal and a Cloth Armor, my matchup is 10 times harder to play than if she were to buy a Sheen. Right? But the thing with itemization is that it's all knowledge. You learn itemizations by... I mean, that's why it's probably harder to... I'll put it in S. I won't put it super important. It is super important, uh, especially in the early uh, laying phase, but also mid to late, right? If you itemize wrong, let's say I buy Duskplate, however, or Gore Drinker, but I'm playing against three tanks that I'm never going to be dealing damage. Or let's say I buy Duskplate, right? Instead of... Um, Eclipse or Cleaver. So yeah, itemization is very important, especially in early landing phase, but also later on in the game. So let's put it in S tier. Now there are matchups where you need to know certain nuances, right? So, so let's say you play Allow into Riven, you need to know how to itemize correctly, and that will instantly make you have a lot more consistency too. Runes, runes are kind of similar to itemization. So runes itemization, I think the same reasoning. If your runes are bad, very often from the get-go, your matchup will be a lot harder to play. So let's say I play, I mean, Riven has very linear rune page. It's kind of hard to mess up, and I think, Ah, I put Riven, uh, runes in A, because Riot has made it so easy to know, like, a somewhat optimal rune page for your matchup, right? They've literally have a tool right now where you click on one thing and you can get the, the, the optimal rune page that people, generally speaking, will play in your matchup. And if I play Riven with Sorcery, if I play Riven with Resolve, it's kind of still the same game. Uh, there are some champions where choosing runes is maybe even harder. So let's say I'm playing Jace, it might be harder for me to choose between Face Rush, Conqueror or First Strike, so then I guess it's a bit harder, but there's so many champions that have the same rune page. If you're playing Jungle, you're almost playing the same rune page on every champion, and there's so many champions, like, for example, the Lethal Tempo one, that could be used for Trinomer, could be used for Aurelia, could be used for Yone, there's like, so... I guess runes are not that hard, honestly. Yeah, B and C tier are, are kind of useless. I mean, I could even put runes here almost. They're, they're so... They are important, right? But it's so easy to know what runes to take. Win conditions. Win conditions, win conditions. Honestly, win conditions sucks mattering in, in mid to late game. Uh, like, it, it is very important to, to understand win conditions. But what do you mean with understanding win conditions, right? I mean, for top lane... This is also less important than it is for other roles, right? For for jungle, for example, you start playing towards your wing condition at level 1. For top lane, we are just standing chilling, so, and this is a top lane fundamental tier list, so I'm putting wing conditions here. Like, wing conditions, it is important, but it starts mattering after your laning phase. And generally speaking, 60% of your games, 70% of your games are going to be decided after laning phase, so like... What do win conditions matter? Like, playing towards win conditions is important if you are ahead in top lane and you're able to control the game. That happens 50% of your games. Now, 50% of your games are even done before you can start thinking about win conditions. So, yeah, for top lane win conditions, I just put it here. It doesn't really matter for top lane. Same for team fighting. I mean, team fighting is a very important concept for top lane, right? Team fighting is very important, but when do you start team fighting as a top laner? Maybe 20 minutes in the game? Maybe 22 minutes into the game? Like, it is an important concept. But how important is it, really? If, if you have good laning phases, how much does it matter that your team fighting is good? If I'm one item above enemy team before I join a single team fight, because my wave control, my general check, and my recoil timer, my side laning, my mentality, and my level timers are good, then how, what the hell does it matter what team fight I join? Like, I don't have to think about the team fight because by default, my, my team fight is already gonna be good because I, I'm doing other things correctly, right? Now, don't get me wrong, team fighting is a super important concept, but very often as a top laner, Maybe your first team fight is 20 minutes in the game. And how often can you say that the games that you played as a top laner were only decided by team fighting? Very rarely. Very rarely can you say, oh, I lost this game because of team fighting. And the same thing is with roaming. I mean, roaming is important as a top laner, but I don't see think it's that important. Uh, there's gonna be some champions that like to roam more than others. For example, champions like Camille or champions like Shen maybe. Uh, roaming would be maybe S tier, right? But, but in a general sense, like roaming... 
is an important thing, but you don't win too many laning phases by roaming. And also, roaming very often ha matters more towards, let's say, the minute 10 mark of your laning phase where you could get tempo, 5 impact impacting your matchup, and, and maybe evade enemy jungle, or maybe play for Herald, or get a good roam target to both TP back to top. Get a good roam target to mid and not lose too much. So, I think this is okay. Yeah, Quinn, Pantheon, Shen, Camille, for, for them, roaming is a lot more important, but for the general top laner, like your Olaf, your Darius, your Riven, your Fiora, uh, like these champions, they don't care too much about roaming. They're not that good at roaming. Uh, so I don't think it's that important. The priority usage is the exact same thing as roaming. No, priority usage is actually more important. Because priority usage also means setting up vision. Priority usage also means proxying. Priority usage, it's kind of similar to using tempo. So priority usage to me goes here, right? If you understand tempo, then you need to use your priority too uh, as well. So I think this goes here. Yeah, I think we went over all the fundamentals now. I'm going to write... Uh, level level timer holy shit very important i've coached master players that didn't know their level of timers we've created ourselves gg our creation chat our creation okay let's make a picture make a picture for the bros what are we thinking do you guys agree do you guys disagree on anything we can have a little bit of a conversation about it too yeah.